the second part of uh, John Lewis' uh, talk, Stable Rationality and uh, Quadratic Forms. Thank you. Well, thank you a second time then. Right. So, so today I will talk about uh, this list of papers. Uh, the first paper is a paper by Hasset uh, pirutkan Chinkel. And there are, there are some surveys which you can look at. And I will talk about the, these four papers by Schreider. Uh, one called the Quaric Bundles over PN, which um, proved disproved stable rationality in many cases by means of using specialization and unified cohomology. The second paper, which is more special, which handles quadratic bundles of relative dimension two over P2, which is connected with the paper of Hasset Perot and Schinkel. And here, when it's satisfied with just using the Brouwer group. And there's a paper three, which discusses hypersurfaces of with small slope, uh, which uh, disproves stable rationality for such general hypersurfaces um, using specialization and unified cohomology. And then there's a last, there's a fourth paper. In fact, there are other papers, but uh, that's all I will discuss. The fourth paper discussing the minimum degree for your rationality of hypersurfaces, which could be irrational by means of the same techniques. Right. So let me first discuss this paper of Hasset, Pirk, and Chinkel. So what they produce is they produce, um, they prove that there exist uh, smooth quadratic bundles, that is, quadratic bundles in P3 cross P2. So fiber over P2, the fibers are quadrics in P3. And the total space is smooth. And uh, they, they, the, what was striking is that they produce such examples in a family where for one value of the parameter, value of the parameter, the fiber was definitely non-rational, non-stable rational. And for some other value of the parameter, the fiber was still smooth, but the, the special fiber was not stable rational. I'm sorry, the special fiber was stable rational. So you had, you had a smooth family and then some fibers are stable rational, some are not. So to start, so to do that by taking a, using a specialization technique. And so to do that, you start with a specific example of P2C, which is a correct bundle whose total space is not smooth. Okay, you start with this special example, just as in Artin Mumford, you started with something singular. Okay, so the configuration you're interested in is a smooth conic in P2 and three tangent lines. Okay, very simple. So you can give it like this. You take uh, f of x, y, z given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus twice x, y plus y, z plus z, x. And, uh, and you look at the coordinate axis, x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero. These are three tangents to this conic. Okay, so we're again starting in, with the configuration with tangents as we had in the Artin Mumford example, remember, we had, a, uh, we had a, um, a conic, and then we had a two elliptic curves, which are each right tangent to the conic. Okay, so here, uh, and it's, okay, the conic here doesn't contain points, the, 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 the points such as one, zero, zero. Okay. And of course, this homogeneous form induces square on each coordinate axis. And you take W to be given by this equation. Why is it? So diagonal quadratic form, coefficients Y, Z, Zx, xy, f of x, y, z. So the discriminant actually is just given by f of x, y, z. Because you get squares here. So that's a family of two dimensional quadrics. And so with, what uh, Hasset, Pirin, and Chico do is that they, they compute an explicit resolution of singularities for this w, which is singular. So there's four dimensional varieties, singular. They compute an explicit resolution of singularities. And then they show that the morphism w tilde goes to w is universally CH0 trivial. I remind you, it means that uh, the map for, for this proper map, the map induced on C is zero, char group of zero cycles, is an isomorphism over the ground field and over any overfield. So this part, as usual, is technically demanding because you have to compute an explicit region of singularities. Okay. In fact, in this case, as Schrader later proved, uh, I mentioned that before, below, one can dispense with the ex explicit resolution in this argument. Okay. Now, uh, okay, let's look at this. So if we take a smooth two-dimensional quadratic over field F, if the discriminant is not a square, then the map from Brob of F to Brob of F of Q is injective, as everybody knows in this room. 
So you consider the quaternion symbol X over Z, Y over Z in bar graph C of P2. So look at the joint fiber of this vibration. It's a, it's a two-dimensional quadratic of a C of P2. You look at this quaternion symbol. Of course, it's not trivial because you can look at residues on, uh, along X equals zero, Y equals zero. And then you should, the image in bar of C of W is non-zero okay? because this map is injective. Okay? In our case, the discriminant is not a square, so the map is injective. So this class is still non-zero when we move it over to the function field of, fourth fold, of the fourth fold. But then one shows that the image of this class actually is unrified in the function field of C of W. And of course, this has to do with the tangency properties of the configuration we were given, as usual. Same argument as in the Artin Manfred example, or in the, uh, in the argument with uh, Oyangurin, with the same type of argument. We don't have to use an explicit disingratiation to prove this. Okay. And now, using this example as a special fiber and the specialization method, I said Pierre and Chicot and proved that exists smooth, what I announced at the beginning, there exists smooth projective families X goes to S. So the map X is smooth, the map X goes to S is smooth. S is connected, you can take a curve if you want, obviously. The virtual fibers are not stable rational, but there are some special rational fibers. And this was a big open problem, whether there, exists such, there, there existed such families. Okay, so, so here one uses by degree two, two in P2 cross P3. And in fact, when you look at the proof, you wonder why they didn't use, uh, they didn't study something in P2 cross P2. Why not study uh, conic bundles over P2 and try to find such examples? But the point is that in the proof, at some point you use Bettini theorems and you, in a low, in low, low dimension, it doesn't work. There's not enough room to get something smooth. Okay, and the rationale of some special fiber is quite easy because what you do is that uh, the, 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 the quadratic bundle is given by a four, four symmetric matrix with polynomial coefficients of degree two in the variables. And so suppose one of these coefficients is, is zero, zero, is zero. Then it's clear that uh, your, your, your quadratic form will have a rational point, namely take X zero equals one, capital X zero equals one, and all the other variables zero, okay? So then at this point, you get a quadratic family with a section. Okay, and the quadratic family with a section of P2, the total space, uh, the generic fiber is rational of P2, so the total space is rational. Okay? Uh, in fact, uh, Voisin proved that in such families, the, the set of points in S where the fiber is rational are dense for the complex topology. So you have this family where uh, the, the, complex, the points where the fiber is, is rational uh, is dense in S, but uh, the, the very general points, the fiber is not stable rational. Right. Okay, now let me go back for a second to the specialization technique, which I mentioned in, in the previous lecture. And I, I, I just modified a bit the slide which I had last time. So we, so you have, I, I remind you there are two ways to look at this, uh, these stories. Either you look at, uh, you are very much of a complex algebraic geometer, and you look at families over a curve, say, and you talk about uh, very general things, or you're more in the arithmetic side and you think of a discrete variation ring, the field of fraction, the residual field. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking the language of discrete variation rings now. So in so this family, can you tell explicitly which fibers are rational? Uh, no, I mean, I tell you, the, 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 you get some rational by, uh, by, by proving that uh, there's, there's a section, the, your quadratic bundle at that point acquires a section. So you have to decide when it acquires a section. So, I mean, there could be other ones which are rational, but the, the ones for which you prove that they're rational, they're rational because they're conic bundles, they're quadratic bundles or a PN with a section. Okay, so the total space is rational. So but they're just proving that one fiber is rational. No, and proving that one fiber is rational is easy, is easy as I said. As I said, you just have to, the example I said, you, 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 you look at A0, 0 equals 0, then you, you get a rational point. But uh, proving that lots of um, values of the parameters where you have a section is not so obvious. That does, the fact that there's RSK dense is, is not obvious. You see, when I tell you this A0, 0 equals 0, 
I'm, I'm, this is going to be a closed set in the parameter space. So it, no, it's not so easy to do. This is in this argument of voisin, which I don't have in my mind right now. Okay. So, okay, so now let me remind you of the, the specialization technique. You have a discrete ration ring, the field of fraction, capital K, and the residue field. And here I'm going to assume that the residue field algebraic a close of characteristic zero to make things simple. We have X over A, curly X, which is proper, face fully flat with geometry integral fibers. Last time I assumed that the joint fiber was smooth. There is no need to assume that the joint fiber is smooth for this kind of argument. You can specialize from something which is uh, singular to something which is singular and still get some information. Right? So what one assumes is that the special fiber admits a desingularization such that the discrimination map is universally C0 trivial. Okay? And now let K bar be a very closure of the field of fraction, capital K, look at the geometric generic fiber and take a desingularization of this uh, geometric, uh, sing, uh, geometric, um, this geometric uh, generic fiber. And then what one has is that with the following statements, each of them implies the next one. The geometric generic fiber is stably rational. The smooth K bar variety W, the resolution is you know, say, say, trivial. So this one implies this one, that's quite easy. And then the smooth K variety is that, so the resolution of the, the special fiber is you know, say, say, zero trivial. Okay. So from a hypothesis on the geometric generic fiber, you get something on the geometric um, um, special fiber, which implies that this Z is not in particular, not, not, not uh, okay, that's all I want to say. Okay. Okay. And this last property implies that uh, if you take any other field of K, the map from HI LZ mod N to HI unified is an isomorphism. Okay, if you have this C0 triviality, uh, unified cohomology is controlled by what happens from the bottom and similarly for the bra group. Okay. So the thing to remember is that uh, if the geometric generic fiber has a resolution which is C0 trivial, then you can conclude something on the special fiber. And conversely, if you can show that the special fiber doesn't have this property, then you will deduce that the geometric generic fiber doesn't have this one. And this is the way it's used normally to disprove rationality of the ge ge geometric generic fiber. Okay, so what is whether whether I okay, in the next two slides, uh, I'm going to try to say in a few words what are Schrader's methods and his results. At some point, we'll, the talk will become more technical, so just listen to this one carefully, and then maybe you can stop listening after that. Okay, so one uh, um, ingredient in Schrader's arguments is that he manages to avoid. C0 trivial resolution of singularities of the special fiber of aquatic vibration. So if you study aquatic vibration, in the previous papers, people had to, they started with a special aquatic vibration, say over PN, and then they did the resolution singularity of the total space. And this is painful because you already have to do it explicitly and this is not easy. There's no magic to, to, do, to do resolution of singularities of given variety. And what uh, Charlie noticed is that if, um, you look at the quark, so family of quarks over PN, when you or quark vibration, that's what you want. Then there are tricks to avoid this uh, explicit resolution of singularities. That's a very important point. It gives a lot of leeway in the arguments. Okay, so another thing he does is that, um, so, he, if, so he finds, so this is the, the first paper, uh, he finds, um, all quadric, uh, quadric bundles of PN. So this is a result. This is real. This is not a method. This is a result. Okay. He finds uh, quadric bundles of PN of relative dimension R, which are not stably rational, with smooth total space, and with R between uh, two to the n minus one minus one and two to the n two to the n minus two. Okay. And people familiar with spherical forms will recognize these kind of integers. Okay, so he finds them by special dissertation method applied to special families of fitter quadrics or closely related quadrics. Okay, uh, two to the n minus two is the maximum you can get because if you took something of a, quadric, a smooth quadric over PNC 
of high dimension, it would automatically have a section by, uh, by 10, 10 long, and therefore the total space would be rational. So this is the best you can do here. Okay, now to, to do the specialization method, you have to have, have special fibers and with interesting unified cohomology. And for that, you still need elaborate configuration of hypersurfaces in, in the bottom PN of your quadratic vibration, of the special quadratic vibration. Okay. To ensure that the auxiliary unified cohomology class you get in CFPN becomes unified in total space of the special fiber. Okay, remember this trick of getting something ramified, community class, which is ramified in your PN, and you go up to the total space of some vibration, and it becomes unrafied because the ramification somehow is gobbled up by the ramification of the vibration. Okay, so but for this, you need to produce configuration of hypersurfaces in, in your bottom PN. Okay, so there's still some work to be done here. There's no magic like this one. Okay, and there's a new trick uh, which uh, he has introduced, which is quite spectacular because it avoids the use of this, uh, this, these arguments using Witt, Arason, or Wevotsky. Remember in the in previous talks I mentioned, you have this result that Witt proved that if you take a, a, a conic over a field, the map from the rubber of, of the ground field to the rubber of the function of conic has kernel at most Zen mod two. And that statement was extended to, um, to commodity classes on fist of forms by uh, Arason and then later by, by uh, Olaf Vishik and Wojewski. Well, that's a difficult theorem, especially the last, I mean, all these theorems, Arason and uh, Olaf Vishik Wojewski. But uh, Schroeder managed to devise a, a rather simple trick to avoid this. So somehow one can forget this, uh, this uh, using these very sophisticated arguments. Okay, another thing he does is that he hand of this is less surprising, but it demands some technique. Uh, everything was done in characteristic zero, but in fact, you can, you can do everything in characteristic P because you can use alterations uh, a la De Jong and Gaber, and then you manage to, to push the technique also in positive characteristic. Okay, this avoids uh, C0, using this, uh, the method that avoids C0 trivial resolution of singularities, the, mention I, the technique I mentioned at the beginning. So combining this, Plus, uh, De Jong Gaber, he manages to get results in positive characteristic. Okay, uh, another uh, thing he does, which is, uh, which is the, the third paper, is that he uses the, the specialization technique to deduce result on hypersurfaces from the case of Fister forms. That's, uh, that's what I mentioned at the very beginning. It's quite spectacular that all these things about quadratic form, Fister forms, they, you manage to inject them. At, and then in the end, get something about arbitrary hypersurfaces in PN. Okay, so it lets hypersurface degree D degenerate to hypersurfaces of degree D, which contain a suitable linear subspace of D minus two. So that when you intersect by linear spaces containing this, you might you these hypersurfaces, the special ones, become partial to correct bundles of a projective space. Okay, and this quadratic bundle of projective space are handled by the technique which he had used for before. So that's a, that's a great idea. And then uh, all this thing works in characteristic different from two. So he was not happy about this. And so he, uh, he, there's a beautiful trick in the last paper, before I don't know whether I reached that point, where he replaces Pfister quadratic forms by something called Pfister Fermat hypersurfaces which are just like fist of forms, except that you replace the squares by n spar. And so how you manage to do, to do things with them, uh, I'll, I'll come to that if I have time. And then you manage to handle characteristic different from uh, characteristic two as well. Right, so this is a summary of uh, ideas and results which uh, are in these papers of Schreier. Okay, so let me start with the first slide, the first technique, which, which is how to avoid using C0 trivial resolution of singularities that's a special fiber. So here is theorem A. Uh, take R, discrete version ring, K is field of fractions, little K is 3D field. And for simplicity, K will be the complex field and K bar and algebraic closure of K. We have a flat integral projective scheme of R as before with geometric integral fibers. X of a K is the geometric fiber, Z of a little K, oh, sorry, this is capital K here. And the set of a little kid is a special fiber. And we consider a desingularization of the special fiber. And then we take a class alpha in the unified cohomology of the function field of Z with coefficient Z mod M. 
And then here's what one assumes. One assumes that if one looks at any cotangent one point of Z tilde, which lies over the singular locus of Z, okay? and so there are only finite many such points, one assumes that the restriction of this alpha to the function field of Y, which makes sense, vanishes. Okay, so you have this class which appears is non-zero, but you assume that when you reduce, you, you look at what happens at, at uh, see the point is, because it's unrolified, if you take a cotangent one point of Z tilde, this class will come from a class in the, in the cohomology of the discrete version ring, the local ring at Y, so you can specialize. That's what I, what's, uh, that's why this makes sense. Okay? And you assume that specialization is zero. Okay? And then you assume that the geometric genetic fiber admits a smooth projective model, which is C0 trivial. For instance, that it is uh, stably rational. And then the conclusion is that alpha must be zero in uh, HIKZ Z model. So you start with this unified cohomology class. You assume something about what happened at specialization at certain points of cotangent one on the signalization of the special fiber. And you conclude from the fact that the geometric generic fiber is stable rational that alpha actually must be zero. So the way this is going to be used, of course, is by using the converse. Namely, you will have a class satisfying this. We'll show that alpha is non-zero and then we'll conclude that the geometric generic fiber is not stable rational. Okay. Right, and so the proof in fact of this, uh, well, this sounds uh, complicated, but in fact, uh, well, it's not too complicated. And in fact, the proof is rather formal. So it uses the function rate of C0 and the proper morphisms. It uses the obvious organization sequence for charge group of zero cycles by restriction to an open set. Uh, it uses the fact that unified cohomology of a smooth projective variety admits a pairing with unified cohomology. That's a standard fact. We knew it for the bra group and it works. I mean, it's, it's explained in, in, for instance, this paper of Makoy, if I quoted in a previous, a previous lecture. And then we use the installation, Hensel's lemma, find extensions of capital K and then base change of K to K of Z. This, this trick of going to the joint point, which I explained in the last lecture. Okay. So, I mean, all this is rather formal. It's quite, I mean, you can write down the proof very easily. It's a, it's, 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 it's a simple theorem. Okay. Uh, now, so you see we have this theorem. Now, some comment on this theorem is that um, there are cases where uh, hypothesis one is completely satisfied. One case where it satisfies is if the closures of the Ys are, are rational varieties. You see, you, we have an evaluation in HIK of Y. But one can show that because we started with something which is unrefined, when you evaluate in K of Y, you still get an unified cohomology class in the function field of K of Y. So if this function field is pure transcendental, at that point, you will have this vanishing. Okay. So this is one case where this hypothesis one is easy to check. But and it, it looks like you still have to work with Z tilde, right? The, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we have Z tilde. Yeah, we Z tilde, but. Uh, you have this. Uh, you have this. This Y lying on the tilde, and as I say, uh, uh, there's a functionality of unified cohomology. So when you evaluate this unified cohomology class here, you get something which is unified in the function field of K of Y with respect to little k. So you you don't need to know what Z tilde is. No, no. But I well no. I mean. The, no, no, in that if I know that K of Y is pretty transcendental over K, I don't have to know what, what, what the tilde is. But it's not that's right. You have to obviously you have to know kind of those. Well, I mean, this we'll see how the arguments work, but you have to know sort of something about the resolution in order to apply this, what a resolution might look like. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you go. Yeah, I mean, of course, to prove this in general, I mean, to prove in general, you have to know something about the tilde, and we'll see some, something like this later. Does that answer your, your question, Bert? Uh, it wasn't really a question. Any, oh, sorry, I'll let you go on. <laughs> okay. So you, you said that, that one doesn't need to know the resolution. Well, in, uh, in concrete cases, <laughs> in concrete cases, uh, well, I mean, to prove this statement one, we have to know the, you have to know something about the resolution. Yes. So but, you, you mean I mean, you only need to know something in co-dimension one, right? 
right. yeah, but I mean, as I said, part of this, this results. Um, so when you have chronic bundles, what happens is when, when you have chronic bundles, there's, there's a over discrete version ring. Somehow, one manages to prove this vanishing uh, for any chronic bundle. We'll see at the end that we'll have a difficulty in a case when the, this is not a family of chronic bundles. But for a family of chronic bundles, there's a general theorem that guarantees this kind of thing. Because basically, what you do is that you look at chronic bundles over a discrete version ring, so the field of fraction is a discrete version ring with smooth generic fiber. And you take into, you imagine all the possible resolution singularities you could have for something like this. So you, you diagonalize your, your, your quadratic form. So you get unit, 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 and then pi, pi, pi times a unit. And then you start discussing what happens at the possible uh, co components of the special fiber. This is basically what, what uh, so am I, am I, have I come to that point? Um, yeah, okay, I, I'm coming to this point uh, now, okay. So, um, so, so in the first papers, and in the first part of the third paper, uh, the hypothesis which we were discussing is checked by ad hoc manners for the schemes X of R and Z and the run I under consideration. Okay, so in this case, there's a discussion of what the specialization that what the, the, the Z tilde looks like. Okay. In the HPT case, actually, it's quite easy to, to, to avoid it. Okay. So, uh, but in all these cases, the, the special fiber, they're all equipped with a proper subjective morphism to PNC with generic fiber, a smooth quadrature. And then, so this is what I was, uh, and I was answering the question. For such families, so I repeat, Z goes to PNC and the generic fiber is a smooth quadrature. By considering all the possible red reduction for arbitrary smooth quadrics over a field of fraction of the DVR, Schrader proves the following result. For such a Z over PNC, if you start with an R5 commodity class on Z, which comes from a commodity class on PN, and the exponent N is the same as the N here, okay, we're in maximum dimension, then the condition one in CRMA is automatically fulfilled. Okay, so in that case, we don't have to actually write down the Z tilde. This is proven once and for all. This is for maximum, so starting from a class in C of PN, a commodity class, but which in maximal commodity equal dimension. Right? So I hope I've answered uh, the questions uh, by telling you whether yeah, it's Thank you. Yeah. But the point is that it is the same end. Okay. I insisted here in the, in the slide. Then. Okay, so now this gives the following theorem C. So R is discrete version ring, K the field of fractions, the little K the residual field, K is the complex field for simplicity, K bar is a degree closure. We have a flat integral projective scheme over R with geometry integral fibers. We assume that the special fiber admits a proper morphism Z to P and K with generic fiber is a smooth quadratic of dimension at least one. If we have a commodity class here, HN, K of PN, Z mod two, uh, same N, whose image in HN, K of Z mod two is unrified and non-zero, then no smooth projective model of the geometric generic fiber is zero trivial. In particular, such a, such a the ge geometric generic fiber is not stable rational. But we want the image of this beta to be unrefined and non zero. And non zero. Okay, so now we look for a complex rational variety S of dimension N and a domain of uh, vibrations that goes to S proper, whose generic fiber is a smooth quadratic and could be used in the above theorem C. Okay, as I said, for R bigger than two to the power n minus two, there is no way because ten lang gives you the section, and then the total space uh, is rational because it's rational of uh, something rational. So in in his first paper, Schreier produced an example in all smaller relative dimensions. So uh, the small point is that if you want examples uh, which are total spaces smooth over p n, then you can do that in dimensions which are between these two to the power n minus two and two to the power n minus one. Otherwise, he gives examples on not on PN, but on products of two projective spaces, but never mind. Okay. So let me just indicate the case of maximal relative dimension. So R is two to the power n minus two. So the, the, the result is that a very general hypersurface 
in PR plus one cross PN with by degree 2D. And D at least N plus two R plus one is not fairly rational. So the degree D is relatively high with respect to, to N and R. So, and for do, to do this, well, he does uh, web, um, okay, he constructs a special quadrix over S, is PN. So the Jenk fiber is a fissile quadrix, is a, is a fissile form given by A1, AN minus one, B1, B2. And the I and BJs enjoy variative properties, which are similar to those we had in the paper with the young grain. So you recognize this, we had A1, A2, and then B1, B, product of B1, B2. I'm sorry, this, this is a point here. This is a1 comma a n minus one comma b1 yeah this is times b2 right that was correct okay and this uh variative properties come from these strong tangential properties for the zeros and poles of the i and the bj which you choose and then as much as in the in the in the previous papers uh the element a1 cup a1 minus one cup b1 in h n of c of s has non-zero image uh, well, a non zero image and is unrified. Okay. The fact that it's non zero in these papers is, uh, uses the Olof Vishik Voivodsky result. Okay. Namely, for the function field of Fister neighbor of A1 AN over field K, the kernel of HN KZ mod 2 goes to HN FZ mod 2 is spanned by the cup product A1 cup AN, where I denote by B the class of an element in K star mod K star squared, the class of B in K star. So the fact that we know the exact kernel is used in this paper, in the, the first paper of Schreider, to use all of Vichy Voivodsky and guarantee that the community class when one needs is non-zero upstairs. The fact it's unified comes from a combinatorial but technically involved part. You have to define the I and the BJs and produce configurations of hyperplanes and quarks in PN. Remember, in the paper with uh, Ian Guren, we produce configurations of planes. In fact, in the paper, in the, his first paper, Schrader one, Schrader uh, produces a configuration of planes and quadrics. And the result is that the ramification locus of the special fiber has relatively a high degree, which ultimately is not too good to produce good hypersurfaces because the degree somehow is too high. We'll see how it, it manages, it, might, it will manage to get rid of this problem in the, in the, in the paper number three. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. In the article of Schrader 1, rather complicated solution, coefficient rather high degree. In Schrader 1, three simpler solution. Okay, the varieties one produces are rather singular. And so if you want to deform them in a flat, uh, flat family, where W is Z and the general fiber is smooth and equipped with a flat projective map, all fibers of which are quadrics, if you want the total space to be to, to families with smooth varieties, as in the uh, acid period Kachinkel uh, argument, at some point you want to use some Bertini type of argument, and that imposes further restriction on the degrees. So this is how ultimately you get this restriction on the degrees, which is rather high. So this D, which is bigger than n plus two R. Remember R is two to the power n minus two. So this is relatively high with respect to the dimension. But in any case, what what he managed, what Schreier manages to prove in this in this uh, paper is to prove, produce lots of quadric bundles, uh, which are flat, total space smooth, over or over PN, uh, in for many uh, in in many examples of uh, these are there, there are quadrics in in particular spaces or vector bundles over PN, and he produces many examples, many it's a big generalization of what the uh, Hasset Pirkenchikel had done. In fact, he, he came back to this asset period catching color example. And so uh, he avoids resolution of singularities. Again, this is rather easy to do in that case. In fact, I've written papers uh, explaining that in very simple cases. Um, okay, and so what he gets in the end, he manages to prove that the very general hypersurface of by degree 2D in P3 current P2 is not say very rational as soon as D is at least two. But there's a lot of games you can play with these things uh, and people have played this game. If you manage to do two, two, quite often you manage to do two D for D at least two by uh, specializing in various ways. There are several ways to do it. You can use specialization to um, reducible fibers as Totara started to do in some cases. You can also do that here. 
But what's important in this paper is that this paper is gives some inspiration for the, the next paper, Schrader 3, because here for the first time you see something, this is not a twisted form, okay? It becomes a twisted form if you extract the square root of this, but it's not a twisted form to start with. But it's very, somehow it's close to a twisted form, okay? And so let's come to the third paper, uh, hypersurfaces of small slopes. Uh, so the theorem which he proves is this, the, the striking theorem, a very general smooth hypersurface in Pn plus one C with dimension N therefore, and of degree D at least log two N plus two is not stable rational. So what was known before that uh, were the results by Collar and Totaro, where they had roughly proved that if D is at least two N over three, then X is not stable rational. Okay, for people who are not familiar with this theory, uh, if you take a hypersurface of degree D in Pn plus one, and D is strictly bigger than N plus one, it's quite obvious that X is not going to be stable rational because you have lots of non-trivial global differentials. So the problem becomes interesting if the degree is at, is at most N plus one. And so, and then if the degree is between four and N plus, N plus one, well, we'd like to know whether these things are rational or not. Okay? And so, People knew, I mean, this was a big result that if the degree is as low as 2n over 3, then the general uh, smooth hypersurface is not uh, stable rational. But now we, uh, Schreider has managed to go way down. It has gone down to log 2n. Okay, so how does this story start? You start with an integer n, and it's a fact that if you take uh, any integer n, you can write it in a unique way as the sum of two integers n and r where n is at least two, r is at least one, and r is between a two to the power n minus one minus two and two to the power n minus n, two to the power n minus two. This integer n is just determined and it is of the order of log two n. That's why where the log two n here comes, comes from. So the precise statement which uh, Schroeder proved is that if you fix capital N and little n as above, a very general hypersurface in Pn plus one C with degree D at least n plus two is not stable rational. Okay, the, that the powers of two appear in this story uh, has to do with the proof. One uses twisted forms, and as we as well known, the rank of twisted forms is a power of two. Okay, what is the method? The method is to use theorem C. Theorem C, let's have a look again at theorem C, in case you or I do not remember it. So theorem C is this one. Okay, we want a special fiber, smooth quartic of dimension at least one, and a commodity class uh, down bottom in Pn, which uh, becomes unrified in Z and which is non zero. Okay. okay, so this is going to be a bit technical, but you, you can see, look at the look of the equations and you'll get a feeling. So let little xi be the, so x0, xi are the homogeneous coordinates. xi is the fine coordinates, f is c of pn. And one uses a, an even degree homogeneous form, g of x0, xn, which induces a square on, the, on each coordinate axis and doesn't pass through the vertices. This is just like we had before, okay? We, in the, the, in the um, Hassett, Hassett uh, period catching curl example, we had this quartic form, uh, which induced a square on the coordinate axis. Okay, it's not just like, uh, just the same. And just as in, in their example, so G is you know, dehomogenized, and you take a quadratic form Q of the diagonal with coefficient G, C1, CR plus one, where R is at most two to the power n minus two, and each CI here in the function field of, of Pn is the product of copies of a product of XJs. So x1, x12, x13, whatever. Okay, for j equals one, one n. So that so if you if you forgot that if you had a one here, you would be looking at the subform of a fissa form. Okay, but here we, you replace the one by g. Okay, so that's why I say that it's slightly deformed with respect to the form one c one c r plus one, which is the subform of fissa form. Okay. And one considers a family of quadrics of a Pn defined by Q over C of Pn, 
and the community class X1 cap Xn down in the bottom Xhn, same n, C of Pn, Zn mod 2. And Xi again is the class of Xi in F star mod F star square, which is H1 of Zn mod 2. And so you use the techniques from Schrader 1, avoiding C0 trivial resolution, when shows that the image of alpha in Hn of C of P and Zn mod 2 is unrefined. And when it shows that the class alpha vanishes on smooth component of the, of the singularization of Z, which do not lie over the joint point of PN. And this can be avoided. There's a, you can do it by direct computation, which actually Schreier does in his, at the beginning of his paper. But at the end, he proves the general theorem B, which shows that you don't have to do it. Okay. So there's a general argument that will ensure this condition that alpha uh, vanishes on smooth component of the directionalization of Z, which do not lie with the joint point of PN. Okay. And so we are also wants to show that alpha is not zero. This is the other point. Okay. So here there's a new trick. This is the trick that avoids Vit Arason, Wojewski, uh, all of Vishik Wojewski. So if you if you add r equals two to the power n minus two, just two to the power n minus two, the, the, the top the top level. Okay, r equals two. You could use all of Vichy Wojewski at that point, but if I smaller, well, you don't manage. Okay, and so he has this new trick, and in fact, which is quite simple. So what he does is that he puts a variable in the coefficients of g. And then he specializes somewhere to a relative quadratic QT, which has a rational point. So at that point, when you specialize, you get a situation where obviously you have a section. And so and, and your community class specializes to something which is non-zero and therefore is non-zero upstairs because you have a section. And so this way you manage it, you manage to prove that the community class actually uh, the, the class alpha here um, um, is non-zero. Here, yeah, this is what we want, which we needed. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's how he does it. And now a question. So now we produce a nice family of uh, correct bundles, okay, which specializes to uh, to this um, to the, to this uh, very special um, quadric bundle. Uh, which is a uh, with generic fiber is, is defined by a um, by a very um, twisted form of Vista quadric. Okay, now how does from this how does one get a smooth hypersis, a smooth slope in PN plus one? So, for suitable R D N, a very general smooth hypersurface X0 of degree D in PN plus one C may be specialized to a given hypersurface X1 of the same degree D with multiplicity D minus two along an R plane. So you, you specialize to something which contains an R plane and has multiplicity D minus two, okay? Just as you would specialize, I don't know, you, you can specialize a cubic curve to a smooth cubic curve to a, a cubic curve with a, with a singular point. Well, okay, that here you specialize like this. And now you blow up. So then you, you blow up, basically what you take, you do, uh, you take linear spaces through this of the right dimensions through this uh, plane. And the rest will be something which will be a correct because you had something of degree D, you intersect, you get something of degree D minus two plus something of degree two. So you blow up this R plane. And what you get is that you get the proper transform of, is a correct bundle of relative dimension R, Z goes to PN. And then the point is that one can arrange that this Z is exactly as in the above construction. Okay, so we had this special Z, which was gotten by something which had to do with this twisted uh, twister quadric. Okay, you can do it with uh, this, uh, this construction. And now we consider this singularization of this Z. And one has the composite map Z tilde goes to Z goes to X1. And one wants to produce a non zero element in the unified cohomology of, of Z tilde. Now, note the function fields of all these things are the same. Okay, so the unified cohomology is the same for C of Z tilde, for C of Z1, and for C of X1. Okay, we want a class which vanishes on each codimension one point of Z tilde, which lies over a singular point of P1 
of x1. Okay, because remember we had uh, x0 special that goes to x1, and then we have this z tilde, which is a desingularization of x1. So at this point, uh, you see the the um, the z is a is a quadric, is a quadric bundle over p n, but the x one is not. Okay, so I cannot invoke this general theorem, whatever it was, which uh, gave us for free that the community class um, vanishes on on this uh, at this point. Okay, so you have to do something. And a uh, specific argument is required for the points which lie over P and X over this linear space. Uh, this is the R plane, this is the R, the R plane P in X1. I'll say a word about this in a minute. And then you can use theorem C and it gives that the hypersurface X0 is not C0 trivial and in particular is not stable rational, okay? Because we, we, we get this class, community class for Z tilde, which is non-trivial and which uh, and which vanishes at all the, the connection one points of Z tilde, which lie over the singular points of X1. But as I said, because X1 is not Z, there's a specific argument which is required for the extra points which have been introduced in the blood. So, uh, okay, here I'm, I've tried to give some details. Maybe this is not a good idea. But uh, well, anyway, you can see, you can, well, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, well, you can read the slides afterwards. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to, uh, well, I mean, this is just to tell you that can, it's not too complicated to write these equations, this G we, we were mentioning. Uh, you, yeah, okay. Maybe, I, I mean, you can see the look G, C1, CR plus one. Okay, and then uh, the forms which one wants, and and this is a the, this is the the homogeneous form of degree d in n plus two variables, which so I wanted to show you that you can write this homogeneous form which specializes to something, which which contains um, which is singular along a linear space, uh, with multiplicity d minus two. So it's written down. Okay, uh, let, let's ignore it. Okay, so when we get a class x one x n. And it's an image which satisfied it is honorified. Okay. And so to prove it's honorified, it's again is the same type of argument, uh, this tangency arguments. And so so we want this, this condition that alpha vanishes on the components. Okay. So for for so so the the, the, the problem is to show that um, I, I, I'll come to this point later. So the fact that this alpha vanishes on the components or at relevant components, the fact that alpha is done zero in this argument, it uses the same argument, this, speci this specialization of T goes to T equals zero, okay? So you get a vibration with a section, alpha specialized to alpha zero, which is the image of beta zero, which is non-zero, but because you had a, a section, you get that this alpha actually is non-zero. And this part, gets rid of the olov vichy voivodsky argument, okay? which again would work only in the case i equals to n minus two. So I told you at some point that I was, um, I was uh, hiding an argument and the difference between, this is important between, it took me some time to understand this. I hope I've understood it between Z and X1. So we have to be careful here. The, the points of Z tilde of connection one, which are with the singular locus of X1, okay? So this argument here, what, what, uh, what is used at that point. So look at the condition points which lie over this linear space, which was called P here and now it's called L. The extra argument here, this is a geometric argument, which is easy to, to read. And at the end, what you use, you use the following fact. It's absolutely astonishing. Use the fact, simple fact, that if you take a Pfister neighbor of a Pfister form or field F, the community class A1 cup S in HNF Z mod two vanishes in HNF of Q Z mod two. Okay. So remember, the all of Vishik Voivodsky result is a very subtle result which tell you where the kernel of this map is. But the fact that this sheer cla this class itself vanishes in HNF of Q Z mod two has been known forever. Okay. And this is all that's used 
to get rid to to ensure this argument here, this missing argument at that point. Simply the fact that this uh, comes class vanishes in the function field of this of the Fister quadric and therefore in the, the function field Fister neighbor. Is S so the now, same as N here? Sorry, N is the same N, yeah, N here. Oh, sorry, it's thank you, yeah, yeah, S is N, thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And S is N, thank you, I should, I, I would correct this, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, this is where we started from PN, so this is an N, yeah, PN, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so so this is how ultimately, yeah, I still have some time, uh, Schrader proves the theorem, take N equals N plus R, N is at least two and R is at least one, and R is between these two values, then a very general hypersurface X in PN plus one with degree D at least N plus two is not stable rational. And there's some other argument to get to, to study the cases as R is smaller than this value, but this, this is an important case. Okay, so uh, actually Schrader handles the situation over in a uncountable algebraic closed field of arbitrary characteristic, except for characteristic two. Uh, of course, there's a problem with characteristic two because you want to, here we're using twister forms. And in positive characteristic, different from two, he manages to handle the whole thing by using the Young and Gaber at the right places. But it's it's quite fun because really you you have your special uh, special fiber Z and then you use an alteration. So when you use the alteration, uh, the variety you get on top is uh, the inverse images of the, even if you had some, some sub variety, which is rational, the inverse image would be something which believe far from being rational. So you cannot just use a, um, the fact that the cohomology of something rational is, is trivial because uh, the, the varieties which are, that appear in the process are nicer, they become smooth, but uh, you, <laughs> they become very complicated. Typically, it could be a very general type. So you have to use some other argument at that point, but he manages. Okay, so that's uh, that's so much for the third paper. And now I have a few minutes to tell you about paper four, which is entitled Torsion Order of Fano Hypersurfaces. So in that paper, he uses higher degree forms, which are analogs of Fisser forms. So this looks very bizarre the first time you see this. So a Fister form is a diagonal quadratic form in two to the n variables. So Schrader defines and discovers so-called Fermat Fister forms, phi and n. So what you do is that you take a Fister form, a1, an. So it's diagonal. So it's got coefficients which are x1 square, x2 to the n to the square. And you replace x1 square by x1 to the n, and so on, xi to the square by xi to the n. And in fact, uh, it turns out that these Fermat Fister forms had already been dis discovered and used by Krashen and Mastri for a different purpose. They use them to compare Galois cohomological dimension and Diophantine dimension. This is the CI property of Lang. That's a nice paper, in fact, of Krashen and Mastri, which I didn't know, in fact, but I, uh, I discovered. So this was a few years ago. Okay, and there's the following basic fact for these forms which is the, a basic, the analog of the fact I mentioned for cohomology or for Fister form. Suppose characteristic K doesn't divide M. Take the function field of this uh, Fermat Fister form and take the symbol A1 cap N. And for simplicity, I, I'll argue with, uh, I, I quote it for minor K theory. So it's clear, we take the symbol A1 cap N in minor K theory, modulo M. Well, that symbol has trivial image in Kn minor F mod M. We're not discussing what the kernel is again. We're just saying that this, the image of this symbol up there is trivial. And uh, well, I mean, it's, it's uh, now I forgot whether it's proven. I think it's proven in the Fermat uh, crash and mastery paper, but anyway, it's also proven in the, in the paper by, uh, by um, Maschreider. And it's quite fun to prove, in fact, uh, and again, this is on, the only thing that's going to be used. We're not going to use something about the kernel. Okay? And in fact, we would be in trouble to try to use something about the kernel because I don't know whether there's a, any analog of the uh, olaf vishik voivodsky result in this, in this setup. Okay? So, uh, so over a field whose characteristic doesn't divide n, this paper proves stable irrationality results for the total space of special families of Fermat-Fister hypersurfaces of degree m, 
of our project this is PR by using HR verified Zen modem. So again, we start with PR. We look at uh, commodity in maximal dimension. And then you get a commodity class, which is exactly a border end. And in particular, it gets resulting characteristic two because uh, you just have to take n prime to two and then you get results. And then there are tangency conditions which ensure that class coming from PR become unrotified. Okay. One starts with a form of degree M on PR instead of degree two, which includes induces M spars on the coordinate axis, just the analog what we saw in the asset per catching curl example, except that instead of taking two, while well, you take M, forms of degree M inducing something which is M tangent to, to the coordinate axis. And when does that? A general theorem B as a four quadratic families, but there's a direct proof. And that, that proof mimics the proof which had been done by Fisher Aquarix in the, in the first part of uh, Schreier 3. And then uh, using a specialization technique to citation with a section, as we had seen in Schreier 3. So no need of a would be Fisher Fermat analog of all of Vishik Varvosky, conclude that you get a non-trivial commodity class, which is an okay. okay, And then, then again, you can do degeneration process from smooth hypersurfaces to hypersurfaces containing a suitable multiple linear space, which are themselves barational to the total space of family Z to PN of special Fister hypersurfaces. Okay. And so doing that, uh, he gets, I mean, he gets more and more examples of, um, hypersurfaces of degree D, um, where D is rather small with respect to dimension, which are not stably rational, and that in arbitrary characteristic. But there's also leeway on the D and the N from this. And so that enables him to do something, which is to get information on the possible degree of irrationality of these final hypersurfaces. So remember, it's a question, an open question, whether if you take a final hypersurface, so this hypersurface degree, this smooth hypersurface degree D in PN where D is at most N, whether it's unirational. But you can ask something weaker, you can say, well, if it's unirational, what is the smallest? Well, even if you don't know whether it's unirational, suppose it's unirational, what is the smallest degree of unirationality? With a small, you want the protective space mapping onto your, your variety, is, there, is the degree at least equal to something? Okay. Okay, now this degree, you can control it by something more cohomological. So if you take a smooth projective rational connected variety, there's an integer M, which has the property that if you take any field F containing C, the integer M annihilates the charge group zero cycle. Smallest M is called the torsion order. It's been considered by Reutemann many years ago and by Levin, Chesu, Tamatu, not so many long years ago. And it gives a lower bound for the degree of rationality of X. And so by keeping track of the order of the community classes, which, in, which are involved in the above argument, okay, so you get community classes and here you get not only uh, two, but you get M here, see. Before you had just two in these arguments. Now you get an M. And so by keeping track of this M and decomposing the degree D as a sum of two integers in various ways and using a variant with residual special fiber of the specializing technique, so a variant with received special fiber as Totaro had done. Uh, Schreider proves that the torsion order of a very general final hypersurface XD in PN plus one of degree D at least four is divisible by any integer smaller than blah, blah. Okay, but M rather small with respect to D. And so, I mean, okay, the, you, the first time you see it, you don't realize what this means, but here is the example. Suppose you take X of degree, uh, hypersurface degree 100 in P100, that the torsion order is divisible by this integer, but these are primes. So in, in degree in degree 100, in P100, if this thing is irrational, then the degree is at, uh, irrational is at least seven times 10 to the power 38. Okay. So, uh, well, I'm, this is good, it is half past six. And so I'm finished, but I just mentioned one last slide. The last slide is this. There's some further reading for you. Um, after this paper, and there's been a, uh, a lot of papers on these topics uh, after that. And so there's spectacular papers by um, Nikesh Schinder, Konsevich Chinkel, 
and Nikes Autumn, which I advise you to read, where they study how uh, rationality is generated by smooth fibers, but also you, how you can get some abstraction to stable rationality by using it, looking at special fibers when the special fibers are, are not <laughs> are not irreducible or are not smooth, but are have a decomposition into smooth components. And typically, they, there is something uh, quite spectacular that in some cases, you can have a specialization to a special divisor, which is some of smooth, uh, smooth components. And then you can prove that the geometric generic fiber is not rational using the fact that some intersection of these components is not rational. The way you know that the intersections are rational by using some, some Austin Manfred type of argument, but then you can push yourself up into n dimension and get that the total space is not rational. So, well, uh, you can read these various papers on this topic. And... Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? So you mentioned hypersurfaces of small slope. Um, yes. What what does that mean? Oh, it means d over n, degree divided by dimension. So that you see, if the, the, for a final hypersurface, uh, d if if you're in in pn, uh, I, I always forget d d. Well, if if you're of degree d in pn. Uh, the maximum you can get is so in P3, uh, D equals okay, this at most n. And uh, the question is, uh, D over, so D over n is at most one. And the question is, how small can it be, this D over n, so that you can produce examples of varieties which are not, uh, which are not uh, stable rational? I mean, you would expect that if you, you would expect that. Uh, if D is very small with respect to the dimension, then there's a chance that the thing is rational, but well, uh, that's the whole discussion. And and they're known to be rationally connected. Yes, up to, absolutely. Up to if, N if, or N if D has, one? Up to, for D, up, yeah. If D is at most N, uh, then the, this, and the, the, the hypothesis is smooth. This is a final hypersurface, and it's a theorem of Campana and Kolamiya Kamori back in, uh, in the 90s, that such uh, hypersurfaces are rationally connected. It's a beautiful theorem, yeah. On such a hypersurface, any two points are connected by, by a coverage of zero. And, and what about unirationality? Well, that's a big open problem. In fact, it, it, it's, it's, it's an open problem. Uh, which is not my invention. Uh, every day, I mean, people who have studied this problem have, have raised this question a long time ago. Is it true? That every rationally connected variety is unirational. And people don't believe it, but there's no counterexample. But but what is actually known for unirationality? Well, I'm very is little. it open for every degree up to up to well, n, like up, up, above three? Well, uh, no, no. So so there are cases, well, uh, typically the um, the uh, okay, let's discrete off three. Three we know they're all unirational, but uh, the, fan, the, the example of Maniniskovsky was a quartic hypersurface in P four. It, it's not uh, it's not rational because uh, because the Cremona group is reduced to automorphisms, but some of them are unirational. So this was why the, the Maniniskovsky example is the first counterexample to the problem. Some of them are unirational, but none of them is rational. By the way, just uh, of course, another direction is that if the degree is fixed and the dimension is absolutely enormous, uh, then it's known that those hypersurfaces are unirational. Oh, yes, yes, that, I'm sorry. I should... Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Yeah, this is, goes back to uh, Predonza, no? Who is it? Morin, Morin, Italian named Morin. And there's a paper, uh, there's a paper of, I think, of Mazur and uh, I mean, various people have written papers some, some 20 years ago on the generalizing this result. Yeah, yeah, Bert is absolutely right. Yeah, if n is very large with respect to the degree and people have lessened this degree, uh, then the, the variety is irrational. 
I, I don't remember if this n very large with uh, respect to the degree is close to the n very large to the degree which occurs in the wiring problem and the circle method. Yeah, my, my big memory is that it's 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 truly ridiculous, like, like multiply exponential or something like that. You know, it's just absurd, really. It's not two to the power d. You know, it's a, it's a... yeah, worse than that, I think. <laughs> yeah, worse than that. Yeah. <laughs> So are there any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again for both.